Hi, welcome to Yogi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Today, I am going to be talking about the process of getting a Dutch driving license, whether you're exchanging it for from a country where you're coming from and you're gonna do a straight exchange, or if you have to do the whole entire process, what the theory test is like, what the driving test is like, everything you need to know. And then at the very end of this video, I will also include a couple tips from personal experience because I had to do it, the whole thing. So um, yeah, if that sounds good to you, then why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. All right, you guys. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is who is eligible to take the driving test. So um, if you are 16 years or older, you are eligible to take the theory exam. At 16 and a half, you can take the actual driving lessons at 17 you can get your driving license but between 17 and 18 you have to drive with um, like a supervisor kind of like a parent or somebody experienced and then at 18 you can get your full driving license and if you are over the age of 18 then you can just go ahead and do it all um, also if you're international presumably you are also over 18 and you can go ahead and do the exam one thing I do want to mention, and this was a bit of a surprise um, to me, um, is how much it costs. So on average, if you're starting with the theory and going all the way up to a driving um, driving license, you're going to spend about 2,300 euro, which is crazy. Um, if you're Dutch and you're watching this, the reason that it's so shocking to me is that in the United States, you don't need to have a single driving lesson. Like you can take the written test and then have your parent teach you how to drive and then you can drive. So, I mean, once you pass the, pass the exam, but you don't have to take these lessons, which are so costly in the, in the Netherlands and I'm sure in other places parts of Europe too, they get, but I, I only have experience in the Netherlands. That's why I talk about the Netherlands. So anyway, expect that you're going to pay around 2,300 euros. That's the estimate provided on some of the websites that I was doing research on, which as always are linked in my description box below for you guys to be able to do your own research too. So who is taking this exam? I already mentioned if you are 16 years or older, you're eligible to sit for the theory exam. Um, and then also this is going to be for internationals or expats that are coming from a non-EU or EEA country and have a valid license from that country itself. Um, there are some kind of small rules that I will just mention very briefly here, but those change. So make sure you check, you know, for the most applicable one. But basically, if your EU or EEA driving license um, was issued before January uh, 2013, then you can drive with your foreign license for um, for up to 15 years. Now, if your driving license was issued after January 2013, then you have a period of up to one year to drive with your international, with your, excuse me, with your EU EEA license here in the Netherlands before you have to exchange. There are some exceptions to this. Basically, if you have diplomatic status, if you're working for a specific entity and you have a special diplomatic exception card or um, like for example if you're working at the United Nations or one of its bodies um, then you can just continue driving with your regular license as can your family and your children so I mean by family I meant your spouse and your children so if you are dip you know have diplomatic status you are exempted from these rules if you do want to use this diplomatic um, kind of exception to be able to drive with your license, what you're going to need to have is, well, your, inter your, your license from where you're from, and then also that special Ministry of Foreign Affairs card, which if you know what I'm talking about, then this applies to you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then this exception doesn't apply to you. There is another caveat, and that is if you are in the Netherlands with what they call the 30% ruling, um, and so if you have that ruling, then there is a period of time with which, 
like between which you entered the country, I believe it's 185 days or six months that you can go in and exchange your license. If you miss that cutoff, you're going to need to do the whole test from the beginning. So make sure you check, make sure you look what the current rules are, um, and whether or not you can exchange your license. And if you do want to exchange your license, do it when you arrive. Don't wait. This is not something that you should wait on. Moving on to the actual exams themselves. So in order to get a Dutch driving license, you need to pass two different tests. One is like a written theory exam, and then one is the practical exam where you're driving in the car with um, an examiner. I think this is pretty much standard all over the world, but it's how it is here too. For the theory exam, you can buy a book, study it on your own, and then sign up on the website, which is linked below. You can sign up for that um, on your own using your DigiD and just choose a place where you want to take the test. Keeping in mind that sometimes, you know, in Amsterdam, the waiting time might be longer than in, I don't know, Harlem. So you can, if you're willing to travel, you might be able to take it sooner. The test generally lasts around 30 minutes, but they do have exceptions if you have special needs or if you're doing something, you know, it, it's all in the description below. But if you have some certain special needs that you need more time or something like that, or you need a translator, that's, that is possible. That is an option. But then the test is obviously longer than 30 minutes, but the standard is about 30 minutes. You are able to do your driving theory exam in Dutch or English. They have both. So you can have the questions in English. Also, some of those driving books come in English so you can learn. Um, and if you don't speak one of those languages or you don't read one of those languages, you are able to take an interpreter who can help you during the test. So during these 30 minutes, you are going to have two parts of the exam. You're doing it all on the computer and you get your result right away when the test is over, whether you passed or failed. Now, the way that the test is set up, it's, as I said, it's two parts. The first part is what they call hazard recognition. That is 25 questions and you need to answer 13 correctly in order to pass. The second part is like traffic rules and regulations, which is comprised of 40 questions and you need to pass or you need to answer 35 correctly in order to pass. When we get to the end of the video and I'm giving you some of my tips to pass, I will definitely speak about this hazard recognition because that was something that was a challenge for me. Once you've passed your um, theory exam, woohoo, have a little celebration. And it is at this point that you can then contact driving schools. There are many. You can even check on Groupon for some discounts. But um, you can find a driving school that is going to teach you how to drive. This also applies if you've had your driving, less, driving license for many years um, and you're coming from a country where you can't just straight up exchange it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, I felt pretty awkward taking driving lessons when I had 15 years of driving experience, but it is what it is. So then you sign up for driving lessons and, um, and then you're on your way. In terms of the driving lessons, um, depending on your skill level, whether you're a total beginner or you're some, an experienced driver like me, um, they did an assessment uh, on my first lesson um, to see like what level I was. Um, everything was fine. They said, you know, maybe you want to take a lesson or two just to get comfortable driving on the narrower Dutch roads um, with bicycles. <laughs> you know, with cyclists, because that is a pretty big difference than anywhere else. So they'll kind of do a level assessment and then they'll tell you, you know, how many lessons they think you should or shouldn't take, not shouldn't, how many lessons they think you should take. Um, and from there on, you can just kind of start. Once your driving um, instructor feels that you are ready to sit for the practical exam, then they or the school will sign you up to take an official um, driving test. So that is done directly through the school. You cannot arrange that on your own. The practical exam itself, you are taking that um, exam in, in the car that you are learning how to drive in, which means that, you know, you have your set of like brakes and things. And then also <laughs> the examiner has on the passenger side, they can control the car a bit. So you're taking the test in that car with the examiner. It is um, sometimes 
depending on what you want, you can have your driving instructor in the car with you. The test lasts about 35 minutes, during which you are driving kind of all over. They're going to take you on the highway. They're going to take you on the streets. They're going to see if you can recognize, um, you know, like intersection or bus lanes. They, they intentionally test you on a whole bunch of things. Um, you have to park the car. They might, as you're driving, they might ask you, you know, how do you know if you need to change your oil or what do you do in case of a flat tire? Like they might ask you some questions, not necessarily that you'll have to like change the oil, but that you know what to do. Um, and so, yeah, so this test lasts about 35 minutes. In addition to the actual driving, they do kind of like a simple, it's a very simple test to see that you can see. Um, so as you're in my, in my case, as we were walking towards the car before we took the practical exam, the examiner stopped me and said, okay, can you read me these, the license plate of that car and that car? And so that was kind of like the eye test that I had, of course, with my glasses, nothing, you know, it's not like a doctor. So once he was confident that I could see, then we could do the test and that's it. So you just kind of drive around and see. Sounds pretty simple, right? I mean, of course it sounds simple when you, when you see that. And especially for somebody who's had a lot of driving experience, you think this is super easy. <sighs> In one more minute, then, then is the tips. Let's say you pass. Woohoo! Congratulations to you. You've passed the driving test. The next step is you're going to get some kind of paper or something saying that, yes, you've passed. Um, and then you take that to your gemeente or your municipality and show them that, pay the fee. And then within a few days or maybe a couple of weeks, you get your driving license in the mail. So great you know congratulations and now you can drive all right so now we've come to the part of this video where i just want to share with you my personal experience and the tips that i have for you guys because hopefully this is going to save you some money because you're not going to have to do it as many times as i had to do it <laughs> so the first um step or the first thing to really keep in mind is buy if you're doing the theory buy a book that comes with a DVD that has practice questions. That hazard recognition, part of the test that I mentioned earlier with 25 questions and that you have to answer 13 correctly, that, that part was so difficult for me. Maybe it's more simple if you are a brand new driver because you're gonna learn based on those images how to react. I didn't even say what it is. Basically what they do is they'll flash a picture from a driver's perspective. So you might see, I don't know, that you are driving down a road with lots of trees and some shade. And then in the distance on the road, you might see like a mom and a kid that are about to cross the road. And then it's gonna say, what do you do in this situation? And then you're gonna have a multiple choice answers, whether it's speed up, slow down, take your foot off the gas, you know, just like, come to a dead stop, like whatever it is, um, they're going to ask you how to react in that situation. If you hear that, I'm sorry, that's, you know, Vinny as usual. Um, the challenging part for me personally with that is that, first of all, I think the answer would depend on whether you're driving an automatic car or a manual car. So maybe you wouldn't put on the brakes if you're driving like a you know a manual car you might like downshift and then have the engine kind of like slowing down your car for you or if I don't know if you're driving an, um, an automatic car I would take my foot off the gas I wouldn't necessarily go to the brake yet but I would just slow down when you have experience when you are an experienced driver there are different ways that you're going to react to the situation when you're a brand new driver you're going to do what what you learn in the book. And so when you have those practice tests that come with the CD, that comes with your theory book, with like a thousand different questions, I really strongly suggest that you do them all. I didn't, I didn't take it seriously the first time around. I thought, I mean, of course I'm gonna know what to do. Like if I see a kid, I'm gonna stop. But that might not be the right answer. The answer that the tester is looking for, that not the tester, but the, the system, that is not the correct answer. Um, so by doing all of the practice tests, which sounds so 
like a lot, like it sounds like a lot, but in doing all of those practice tests, you're going to learn what answer the system wants from you. And then you're going to be able to get those right. So that is my tip for you. Make sure you do all the practice um, questions, all the tests, and then you're going to be ready. Hopefully then you pass on your first try. I took me two because the first time I didn't do the practice questions, I just learned the rules and I was like, cool, I know how to do this. And I didn't. So I had to do it two times. Don't do that. My second two tips, and these are the last two tips that I'm going to offer you for how to pass the driving test here. Um, number one, you are generally going to be able to choose what time you want to take your test. So the driving school, when they say, you know, we're signing you up, let's do it on the I don't know, June 7th. Um, do you want to do it at 8 a.m., 8.30, 8.45? Like what time do you want to do it? choose a time that is not rush hour. So I would not do the test between 8 and 10 a.m. and I would not do it from 3 to 5 p.m. Don't do it. You know why? Because not only are you dealing with cars and of course you're a little bit nervous even if, it, if even if you're an experienced driver just because someone's watching you. You don't need the extra stress of having all the bikes all the bikes on the road at that same time. Um, first time I took the driving test, um, it was at 8 a.m. And they took me over a bridge and it was like really peak rush hour for school. And so there were so many moms with the mama feet, those big bikes with like the little bucket in the front with full of little children. And I mean, I, I found that a little bit intimidating. I had never actually driven in a part of town that had that much concentration of children on bicycles with their moms and that made me a little bit nervous and because I hesitated I failed and also then this is the second point I'm going to tell you is don't give priority when the person that you're giving priority to does not have priority so in this example there was an older lady that was crossing the street that was not in a designated pedestrian area. Um, I did give her priority and failed the test. So because she was not crossing on a crosswalk or like a zebra, a zebra crossing, um, she didn't have like a green light where she was supposed to be crossing and I was supposed to be waiting. Um, nope. And my examiner told me that I was too polite of a driver and that's dangerous that you know, we drive differently in the States or here and here other drivers are depending on you to know the rules and to follow the rules. And so if you are driving in a different way than other Dutch drivers, that can also be dangerous for them and for yourself. So don't give priority when the person does not have priority, unless of course they're already in the road and by not giving them priority, you're going to, you know, hit them. Like don't, don't hit anybody, but also don't, don't give priority. If you see somebody about to cross, don't let them. All right, you guys. So that, those are my tips. That is my explanation for what it looks like and how it is to get a Dutch driving license. Um, a lot of people don't need one and you don't have to have one, but yeah, people get around with bicycles their whole lives and public transportation. And it's great here. That is one of the joys of living here is that you can do that. However, if you do want to have a driving license and you want to have a car and you want to be able to drive, those are the rules. And that is, well, not the rules, but those are, that's the, that's the way to get one. Um, I should mention having a car in the Netherlands is pretty expensive. Even if you buy a cheap car, I mean, gasoline, petrol, it's very expensive here. You, we pay a lot of road tax here, but I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining about that road tax because it means that the roads in the Netherlands are the best roads I've ever seen in any country that I've ever been to. So you can see how that money is being spent. You can see what it's doing. And also I think that the reason that the taxes are what they are is to maybe encourage you to use your car less or certainly the, the cost of parking <laughs> do that in the city centers. They encourage you to use your car less you know, for environmental reasons, at least I think so. So 
that's it you guys thank you so much for coming to my house if you like this video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up um, I also would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you like this kind of um, educational content I also do kind of some fun videos some mom videos so I would love to have you guys as a viewer thank you so much for coming over thank you so much for spending any time that you did with me today I really appreciate it I'm grateful um, to have you and yeah you guys are the best if you have any tips also from your own experience leave them below because the comment section I I love the comment section on my videos more than anywhere else on the internet because you guys are so helpful and that's what I want this channel to be a place where you can come you know if you're interested in the topic and you're Dutch and you can listen to what I say about it and then you can disagree or you can agree and give additional information and if you are moving here or you've just moved here or whatever and you want some information you can get it from me but then you can also read the comments and get all the benefit of of everyone's experience so that's an amazing thing and I'm really grateful so thank you guys thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye